turn out as I had hoped because we have that competing right. thing. But if everybody really likes me and plays it up, maybe they'll ask me to do this again because I love talking to captive audiences. I think this is phenomenal. I love to talk and I love to tell people about good things that are fun to do. And I had a blast doing this. I took organic farming, what is it, three years ago? Two years ago? Two years ago now. Because I've been wanting, I don't have a green thumb. I had a brown thumb. My father was a farmer. He had a green thumb. He could grow anything. He had animals. And he used to tell me all this stuff. But I, like every other kid in the world, didn't listen. And I always thought my father would be around forever. And I thought that fruits and vegetables and, and homemade ricotta and, and cheeses would show up on my kitchen table miraculously when I get home from work like they always did. And then my father passed away. And I found out that the produce fairy was him. And I didn't know that. You know, the, my, the produce fairy, I mean, because he had a key. And he came in. And he just never said anything. And I'd have everything. He would make cheese. He would make wine. And I would come home and my refrigerator would be. And my mother would make some. I kind of knew the two of the fairy was going by my mom's because she would send food over. She's an Italian mother, born and raised in Italy. And there's nothing that can't be cured by food. Either one of them thought that. If you, you could be sick, someone could die, get a broken bone, they'd be like, here, eat something. <laughs> so anyway, my father, God bless him, passed away. And I, I was like, oh my God, he was the one doing all this. It was like finding out about the tooth fairy. So I tried growing a little, I had an eight by eight, I wanted a few tomatoes, right? And I was horrible. Couldn't grow them, I killed them, I was awful. And I kept telling my husband, I need to take a gardening course because my father is in heaven just cringing, yelling down the instructions that he had been telling me his whole life. So he told me, I signed up. I just came in, I said, I'm gonna take this course, and I did. And I loved it. It was the best thing I ever did. I'm gonna be a student the rest of my life. I'm gonna take, at least one, this year, this semester I'm taking three courses, but I'm gonna take at least one course a semester till I die. I'm gonna be the oldest community college student. That's what they're gonna put on my tombstone. But anyway, I came in and I met Dr. Corvin. Best thing. And I met Mark and a bunch of other really fabulous, unbelievable, phenomenal people. And I learned, or I should say I relearned all the stuff that my father had been saying for years. I would sit in class and go, oh, my father told me that. Now I can remember, that's what he said. And the first, one semester, I grew the best tomato. I grew them as big as your head. They were this big. They tasted, they were phenomenal. And I grew them from seed. I did everything he said. He, Dr. Corvin told me about, make your own grow light. Put the seeds under the, you know. And I was like, oh my God. So. I got my husband, who is such a wonderful man because he puts up with me. Every time I have a project, he's the one that has to do the hard stuff, like cutting things and holding things and hammering things. And I'm the one that's going, are we done yet, honey? You know. But um, so I said, let's make some grow lights. So we got the, the diagram from uh, online that Dr. Coven told us about. And I thought it was too small because being Italian, everything's always too small. I got to have big. And I wanted, um, I wanted to have like four seed flats so I could grow a lot of tomatoes. And the first time I did seeds, I had like 99% germination rate, which is not normal. Usually it's 70 to 80. But I did everything Dr. Corvin said, and I had a 90%, 99% germination rate. I had 110 tomato plants. I think I only planted 100 seeds. I don't know how that happened, but I had peppers. I had, I mean, everything. I was giving away plants to my neighbors. In fact, my neighbors and family, they want me to start seedlings for them this year because the plants were just so fabulous. I did everything Dr. Corvin said. I saved my eggshells. I put some bone meal in each one. So I really got into this. And I've made these, several of these, for <laughs> friends and family. My son saw this, and he took it. He took it, the first one I made. He says, I like this, Mom. Can I have one? I said, yeah, I'll make you one. He says, no, I'll take this one. <laughs> and, he, and my grow light walked out the door. So, And he loves it, too. He loves it. He, tried, he grew his own plants from seedlings for the first time. And he said to me, this is what Bubba used to do, huh, Mom? And I said, yeah, it is. It's exactly what Bubba used to do. So we're, I'm extending it through the family. I'm, I'm teaching my friends about this stuff. And I'm doing baby steps. I just, here, take a plant. And they grow it. And now they're asking me for plants. So it's fun. Um, and now that you know my life history, see, I told you I talk too much. I have instructions here. Everybody can have one. There's a blown up diagram on one side, you can see. And the, these are all PVC pipe or PCV pipe. What is it? PVC. PVC. I always get that wrong. PVC pipe. And it's this very lightweight, just, you know, nice 
Actually, you know, you ought to keep one of these by the door. If a burglar came in, you could, you know, crack a head or two. Can you tell I'm Italian? <laughs> Most people say a burglar comes in, I'm going to run away. I'm Italian. No, you'll crack his head open. Okay. So anyway, you can see the blow-up diagram. All of the, they're all labeled with the lengths. And I've got written instructions on the back. And basically, you go to your, your neighborhood Home Depot or Lowe's, and you need about four lengths of this. Whatever you have extra, save, because I always find little fun things to do with it. But, and you just cut the number of, oh, you don't have to bring it home and cut it if you don't want to. Home Depot or Lowe's will cut it for you. If you bring this in with you, they'll cut the pipes into the desired lengths. But I, my husband and I cut our own because it's a, you know, something we can do together and it's nice for him to work, you know, that kind of thing. But um, so they'll cut it into the desired lengths. And you can see what we did afterwards is I marked everything with how many inches it all is. And I kind of took this mostly apart. I forgot my little rubber mallet, but um, the first time you do it, it's going to be completely disassembled. But after this, to put it away, it's minimal disassembly. You kind of leave it all together. You slide it under a bed in a closet. It's uh, not at all hard to put together or to, um, to um, disassemble. So all I did is we cut these. I've got the elbows. It tells you exactly what you need. You need four, um, you got to buy four 10 foot uh, lengths of pipe. You need eight 3 quarter elbow connectors, which are these round, these bent ones. And there's a picture of them right here. You need eight of the T connectors. There's a picture right there, and it tells you the size, 3 quarter inlet. And um, you need some thin, thin, thin chain, like, you know, like a, like a dog chain, you know, those real skinny ones on a dog leash. You can buy them on, at hardware stores on lengths. You need four lengths of those, three feet long. You need some S hooks, um, four S hooks, and you need two of the light fixtures, so I'll show you. So we've got everything cut, okay? And right here. So you've got everything cut. Let's assume you magically did it yourself or you had it done at Lowe's. And I always put together the bottom first. They won't do it. They won't? Lowe's Home Depot, they'll only cut the black pipe now. Oh, they used to always do it. I went both places, they would do it. Oh, my word. I wonder why. Maybe an ace. Oh, Rocky. oh, maybe. They used to. They used to do it. Maybe too many people are asking them to, so I don't know. But anyway, so you take these. I'm sorry to hear that. But you know what? They're easy to cut, and, and as I said, it's a project. My husband and I did it together. We did it in less than an hour. So basically, you'll get your 53-inch one first. Put an a, um, elbow on either end, okay? And you put it down. So you've got both of these done with the elbows. And then you put the two inch piece here. And as I said, the expanded diagram will show you how everything fits together. If you forget, you get lost, just lay it all down and it'll do it. So basically, this is what we're doing. I wish this was a little bigger, but we'll see. So I need the 18 inch piece right here. And you just fit them in. And again, I don't have my little hammer, but I'm going to do it as best I can. And you just put them all together. Next time we ought to get a little uh, banquet table. Hi, Glenn. How are you, darling? Nice to see you. We're going to see how good I am from memory doing this. Um, OK. And oops. What? You think in the middle I have more room? Okay. Let me just slish over a little bit. We're gonna move, guys. Thank you. Thanks. That might that might be better. You know what? There is more room there. Thank you for thinking of that. You might have to hang over the edge on one side. That's all right. We'll take care of it. Okie doke. Oops. Oh, I keep getting caught. What is this? Oh, my Mikey thing. I'm not a TV person. <laughs> Okie doke. All right. So, I've got 
the 53 inch here, there's an elbow connector on this end, T connector here, 18 inch here, another T connector and another um, elbow. So I need, where is it? That's 34, 34, so I need this one. Two inch pieces there on that, and that's what the problem yep, is. Yep, right? yep. I wonder how that happened. Uh, Can, you just take this off? Can you do that? Can you this one over there? there you go, you're good. See, you're smarter than I am. Actually, I'm probably nervous okay, because I'm here. In the middle? Yep. I need an 18 here and an 18 there. So an 18 here has no. Nope, hold on. Oh, there's one of my T's. That's what I needed. That's why. I'll get there. And so these, all right, so then you just go in like this. And where's my other 18? Hold on. Over there. See, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay. See, because I left the two in here because I couldn't get it out. And normally I have like a little rubber mallet and I can hit them and they come apart. But the only time you have to do the full assembly is the first time you build it. After that, you only break it down to a top and a bottom. You slide it in one of those extra large garbage bags under the bed or in the closet. So then we'll do the top one. This one goes here. This one goes here. And, oh my word. All right. And I'm gonna do the top here. So this one, I need an 18 inch. Thank you. 18 inch in here. 18 inch here. Actually, if someone wants to, Kristen, do you want to push that one in over there? Great, kiddo. And as I said, they're all marked, so all you gotta do is look at your, yep, that goes there. And, oh, not this one, I need an eight. Oh, that is eight, that is eight. I was looking at the wrong number on this side, at the end of there. And this is the top of the base, right here like this. So, let's see. Now we're gonna do, I need the 36 this way, and this is a 36, right? Yep, 36. There you go, kid, that's a 36 too. We can all tell our numbers. It's good for the kids, because it'll you can teach them their numbers while they're going. Honey, get me this 36. Let me put that in here. Now what I like, I just want to demonstrate. I usually take the top off, take it apart here, and then I just go like this, close it down like this. I have the extra large garbage bags, the, the construction ones. I slide it in, goes right under a bed, behind a couch, in a storage closet. These I've saved, I always try to save the boxes, but you can buy plastic, you know, like the storage ones that'll fit it. But until these get torn up, because we don't want to use plastic, we don't have to. We always, I just use those, and they just fit real nice when you're not using them. So let's pull these back up. You see how that goes? Now, is that any simpler? Now, I'll hold these up and you push them. Are you strong enough, honey? See, that's where the little rubber hammer comes in. It works, I mean, because you just tap it just lightly. You don't want to like force them because you don't have a lot of weight here. See, my husband can do this with his bare hands. And I'm sitting there watching him going, ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> but this is the frame. Now, the original one actually was smaller, but I, like I said, wanted a lot of plants. And I can fit four, because most of the flats are, um, they're like 12 by two feet, 12 by 24, I can fit four in here. And then I can have the little odd plants or in pots even if there's enough like on the side, not on this side, but on this side. So um, 
It's neat. And what I do is I have some banquet tables and I have a finish downstairs. But last year I actually did them in my kitchen because I couldn't bear to be away from my from my plants. I was like, my husband's like, I think he'll be more upset if they died than if I did. I'm going, no, honey, because who's going to help me build the next grow light? Mm -hmm. so, but um, so this is the frame. Now, this is, and I put, I put these up on a timer because as much as I love my plants, I sometimes would forget to turn them on or off and I didn't like that and I'm cheap and I didn't want to run electricity if I didn't have to. Now, Chrissy, would you help me? I didn't bring the light bulbs because I was afraid that I might break them and it'd be dangerous, but this is what you do. You go to the store, you buy these, like three feet roughly, and you just buy a length of chain. You put an S hook here, you put one in here and you crimp this one, this one stays on it. And then you can go either way and bring it over. And what I like about this is you can go, when the seedlings just start to sprout and they need to be really close, you can go down within an inch, which is what you're supposed to. As they grow, you go up. The other thing I really liked is some plants grow at different rates. So when I saw that was happening, I would put all my shorter ones at one end, so then pull, pull up, oh yeah, pull it down. I, these might be a little taller and go up, and it never was, yeah, and you could le do that too. So it was really kind of cool. I had a lot of fun with it. And a timer, which I didn't bring by the timer with me, but it's like, it was like $5. And grow, um, plants should be out under a grow light for about 12 to 14 hours after they've germinated. You don't need to use these until after germination. Um, but you do need, some people think, well, if 14 hours is good, 18 hours is better. Plants need the dark cycle also. So you just do it the 12 hours. And I didn't buy the real expensive um, gr special grow, grow lights. I just got a full spectrum light and it was much more reasonable and I did phenomenally well. As I said, my tomatoes were as big as the average person's head. Oh, you got, that's a little, it got cocked a little bit. I must not have crimped that one enough. Nope, turn it the other way. Yeah. Did you have to drill a hole in the back of the... No, it came with a hole in it. And you want to know what these cost? I'm going to tell you something. The pipes, these pipes were under $10. These cost like $9.99 each. Um, pennies for this stuff. I mean, if you wanted a small one, you could probably make it for like 20 bucks. And if you decide that this is too big for you, you can, you, these come in two foot sizes, 18 inch. All you need to do is decide what you're gonna do here. You can just cut down, like say, okay, I only need 12 inches. So you go from, this is like 22 inches. So you go from 22 to like, you want a little extra room, like 14, that way you got two, on, you know, an inch on each side. So you just cut it down here. And if you're going from four feet to two feet, you just cut this down and you can, and you, and if your plants are not the kind of plants that maybe are going to grow real high, you can even make this shorter. But as I said, I'm Italian and I like big. So I like big plants, tall plants, lots of plants. So I wanted a big one. <laughs> My son actually took the smaller one and I just wasn't up to schlepping two of these over here today. But it is entirely possible, like I said, you can get these in two feet fixtures and all you need to do is just cut it down cut it down the size and as I said you saw look how long what did it take us I was talking a lot and waving my hand which I do because I'm Italian um, and I was a little nervous so I kind of lost my place a few times but what did it take minutes and you saw how easy it was to you just take this top piece off leave it intact fold these in into a garbage bag and then you put your flats under here and as soon as they germinate you start and this is my grow light so what do you think, guys? Awesome. Ta-da! Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for coming. I know who my loyal friends are. You came all the way from Fairhaven. This is my friend Rosemary. I told her about it, and she was good enough to come. That's loyalty. Now, what do I owe you? <laughs> yes. Um, so when do you usually start your seeds? Actually, I've started some, and right now. 
with last week, this week, next week, you should. The average um, seedlings, six to eight weeks, and then they go out in the garden. I usually don't put my, my stuff in the garden until Memorial Day weekend. I don't do barbecues or any of that. My husband and I had a gardening marathon. He actually expanded my garden. You want to hear this? Last year, he expanded my garden for me 20, 25 by 60. And we all used all stuff we had. He had taken down some trees in the backyard. He took the logs, outlined the garden. He brought in loam. He gave me not just raised beds. He raised my whole garden level, six to eight inches. And I put in 110 tomato plants last year. I froze tomatoes. I had um, 50 pepper plants, different kinds. Kinds. I had all the herbs. I had egg. My eggplants were gorgeous. Oh, holy God! They, I should have taken, like, should have framed them, but they rot. They were phenomenal. And my um, green beans, zucchini. I didn't have real good luck with my radishes. I got to fool around with them a little bit. I don't know what I did wrong. They just didn't come out nice. They came out little, little crut things. They weren't good. But oh, my garlic. My garlic was great, and um, this year I should even be better because I have the bees. I got beehives now. I'm learning, and that's another class I took here. Phenomenal class. Even if you don't want to keep bees, you should take a beekeeping course. It teaches you about the importance of bees, pollination, that kind of thing. I had a blast. So I have two beehives, and I'm a first-time beekeeper, and both my hives survived the winter. So I'm hoping to have some honey this year, and uh, as I said, I do composting. I raised my own, oh, and this guy's got to come to the rain barrel course. I mean, uh, workshop, excuse me. They're having, this so that you can collect rainwater and irrigate your garden and save water, conserve water. I'm taking a water conservation course this year. Another phenomenal course that you guys should take, everyone should take. So do we have any questions? What can I, yes, cutie in the back. I was wondering, uh, they have a bunch of different, of yes. Is there one you, you don't want to know something? I, I actually experimented and I put the expensive special grow light bulbs in one fixture and I did a full spectrum light bulb, two light bulbs in the other fixture and they're about half the price as opposed to the grow light ones and they were no, there was no difference. So I would say just go in and ask them for a full spectrum sunlight um, kind of thing, you know, gives you full spectrum of the sunlight, but you don't have to spend like $20 a bulb. I think they were like $6 or something, $8. They were, it was like half the price or even more, less than half the price. And I had absolutely no difference, none. My, and my plants were gorgeous, gorgeous. Any other questions? Boy, am I that good or that bad, darling? Do you, <laughs> have I got you all totally confused? I can do this. Sweetheart, you can do this. Your kids can do this. You can get the neighborhood kids doing this. Get them off the streets. Get the kids off the streets. Have them make grow lights. <laughs> and actually, next week, we're having a workshop on seed bombs, which is phenomenal for the for neighborhood kids and your own. Um, Mark is going to do uh, a thing where you come in and you get compost and clay and seeds and you make these balls and you give them to your kids and you tell them, throw them out wherever something looks bare. And they throw them, you know, like... I don't want to say terrorist, what's another word? Environmental, like Johnny Appleseed. Just spread the seeds. And so we're having that next week. And what are we doing the week after? The rain barrel's not till the end of the month, I think. Oh yeah, and we have a plant sale coming up. And we're talking about um, doing a plant swap in May. That's just kind of in, in the talking stages, where if anybody's got too many of their own, like if you started a gazillion, like last year I was given, I mean, I thought I was gonna, I put in, I thought I was gonna put in, 80 tomato plants, I ended up putting 110, I had 40 that I gave away. Because I had, I had planned on 70 to 80% germination, which is normal, and I had like 99. I, I think I only planted 100 seeds and I got like 150 plants or some ridiculous thing. It was crazy, it was crazy. But so anyway guys, I've had a great time. What's going on Glenn, what? What did you do with all the tomatoes? I froze them, I'm, and I gotta tell you, I make the best homemade salsa, fresh salsa, I don't cook it. And actually, I'll write, if anybody wants the recipe for that, email me, because I really, and it's easy. It's so simple, but it's fresh. It's not jarred. You don't cook it. You don't have to 
you know? And I will make a batch of that every week in the summer. I mean, I mean, when I mean a batch, I mean I make like a gallon of it. And my husband will eat it for snacks. My kids will eat it for snacks. My son has been known to, he doesn't live with me anymore because he's 30. He needs a wife. Does anybody have a nice girl we could introduce him to? Um, because he, he's been known to come into my house and like walk home, take home the whole gallon of salsa that I just made. But, and I use all my own tomatoes, my own herbs, my own, everything. Everything comes out of my garden. But, and I make great chili and great spaghetti sauce, too. Yes? You might have mentioned this, but, um, or maybe in another workshop it was discussed. Where do you recommend buying the seeds? Or, you know, All right, it, it seeds. Buying your own tomatoes and getting the seeds? Well, that's a phenomenal thing. And once you start growing your own tomatoes in there, you, if you find something that you really like that did well for you, save your seeds. And you can probably you can do your own seeds, but to first get started, of course you want to. You'd the ideal thing is to get organic seeds if you can. You know they're not chemically treated. That you know where they came from, um, but that's not always possible. And I am not a purist. To me, if you buy a seeds and I don't care if you get it at a job lot or whatever, plant them and you do the right thing. Like when I planted my 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 plants, my tomatoes, my veggies, I save my my eggshells. I have a five gallon bucket I keep in my kitchen. All my eggshells go in there. And um, I, cr I get them all dry and I crush them up and I put a handful in the bottom of each hole when I put a plant in. I put a cup of bone meal, I put a half a teaspoon of like Epsom salts, mix it up, put the plant in. My plants do phenomenal. And I, I cheat, I mean I'll use organic if I can, but if I can't and I wanna try something, I'm not a purist. To me, it's all good. It's, and I don't, but I don't use chemical fertilizers and as I said, I, I use fish, fish emulsion. Um, which there's a, in, in New Bedford, uh, actually a friend of mine, and she found it. She gets it wholesale because you got to buy it by the case if you do that. And we find some other people. Gallon? Well, I buy it by the gallon. I wholesale? Yeah. Oh, wholesale. No, just, wholesale. Yeah, gallon. and she gets a really good price, but she's got to find four other people because a gallon of fish emulsion will, is a, a ton. <laughs> um, but I use, I use fish emulsion. I don't use any chemical fertilizers, and I put compost in my garden. Uh, the whole thing is composted every every year. I think the chemical fertilizers <laughs> are petroleum driven. Yes, they are. They are. Yeah, you're right. Like, you know. Um, I think the only thing you really have to watch for with seeds is that they're not genetically modified and they're not chemically treated. <laughs> Otherwise, if they're not organic. This yes, I, you're right. You know. Yeah. Be, but you know, you're you're right though. As long as they're not genetically modified and as long as they're not treated chemically. So a seed to me, a seed to seed to seed because I'd rather see somebody growing something and you teach them how to do the, you know, with the composting and everything else, then scare them off by, no, you've got to have organic and you get, you know. I mean, I have neighbors that still use like Miracle Grow and I chat with them and I, you know, try to get sway them, but I'm not going to beat them over the head with it because at least they're growing something. Yes. I'm impressed with your ingenuity. So tell me what system you use for composting. Oh, composting is real simple. Um, we have three areas. Um, we dump, we, we may fill everything up and um, leave it there, turn it periodically. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, my husband's a peach, because I'm usually the one that says, honey, don't you think it's time to go dump this into the compost? Don't you think it's time to go turn it? I hell, I do too, but I'm usually running around doing so many other things, and he's happy doing that. He's like my son. My son loves physical labor, so. But we put everything in, we turn it, and then when it, it's been there a while, we put it into the next slot and put fresh stuff, so that we've got like three, three bins going. Everything goes into the compost except for meat products. And, and the only, they say you can compost with meats and things, but the only reason you don't want to is because of coyotes, it attracts bugs. But everything vegetable, do it, everything. And I've just learned so many good things around here. For example, when I do my garden, who likes to weed? Nobody likes to weed, right? I, I get plain cardboard boxes. I save them. My cellar looks like I, I belong to a refugee camp, I think, because there's boxes everywhere. But the cardboard ones with like no color on them, and you just strip off the plastic tape and throw it away, and you open them up. And Susan taught me this. You lay the cardboard down on your garden pathways. And then in between your plants, I buy straw, and I put straw down. I hardly do any weeding at all. So all like little tricks, you know, stuff like that. I talk to everybody and I listen. And then I'm, I'm not ashamed to like, you know, comedians steal each other's jokes. 
I'll steal anybody's tips. I don't care. I'll try it, and I like it. And after I use it long enough, it's mine. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's like my mulch. I've all. I also. Um, I have a pretty big yard, and I have a lot. My husband insists on cutting grass. I would have more metal like, but he's from New Bedford, and they either have concrete or they have cut grass. Um, so he insists on cutting the grass. So the grass clippings go into the mulch, but we have so much grass clippings that I will take it and I, he'll make a pile for me and I also use that for mulching. I'll put that down first and then the straw. It keeps the moisture in and I do very, very little weeding. Very little weeding. Um, we don't do a big heavy till either. I bought a broad fork. I do a lot of tilling by broad fork, but when I'm not around, my husband will get out with the rototiller because he's a guy and it's just the toy thing, the toy factor. But um, we try to keep it as natural as possible. And I know my father's up there going, you should have listened to me a long time ago. You wouldn't have had to take all these courses, but I'm having a blast. Um, dog manure. Yes. It's that you can compost it. Yes. Use that in your too? Is it good? If it's composted, you don't want to put any. I know a woman who thought she was going to. Well, I don't. I'm not. No, let's go back. I know of a woman, because I don't know her, because I would be like, how would you do this? She actually uses a chamber pot and puts her own refuse in her garden. And of course, her husband won't eat. Nothing will eat anything. If you compost anything, even human um, waste can be used if it's composted. But I would never do that. I just don't. I think it's too easy for diseases. But animal manure historically has been used. There's nothing wrong with dog, I don't think, as long as it's thoroughly composted so that it's like a soil almost. You know what I mean? When it's done. It's not. You got to get it hot enough to kill the fat. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You've got it, it's got to be, but it's got to be composted properly. Don't just you don't just put raw manure on anything. Well, you know what though? If you're afraid that it's not getting hot enough, buy one of those giant thermometers. They're like ten or twenty bucks at a hardware store, and you can make sure that the middle of your compost pile is getting hot enough, so you don't have to worry about the pathogens. Okay. What do you put on the top of the compost to keep it? We usually cover it with a um, a dray. I have a you know a bunch of blast, plastic tarps. Again, I hate to say plastic, that but I for my dog issue. Yeah, <laughs> I cover it with a tarp, and it gets it really gets steaming in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's good. But you want to uncover it now and then because you want to get some of the rain in. You need moisture too. It's it's like a fine. It's like making a good sauce, you know? You gotta be there, you gotta touch, you gotta stir, you gotta taste it, you gotta figure out what's going on with it. You can't just leave it alone. You can't just throw things and expect it to compost. Anything else? Anybody else? You're gonna make me stop talking already? <laughs> All right. And like I said, if anybody has questions or if you want, I'm serious, if you want any recipes you heard me talk about, email me. bbayway at comcast.net. B-B-A-Y-W-A-Y at Comcast.net. Julia is my name. Did I introduce myself at the beginning? My name's Julia. <laughs> and thank you for coming. Thank you. I was, I was a little worried because we had the competition with the other talk that was going on. But you guys love me. You're my favorite.